In rural Georgia stands a monument that includes what some call the Ten Commandments of the New Age. This is Skywatch TV News for Monday, September 14th, 2015. I'm Derek Gilbert. In studio is the founder of Adullam Films and the writer and director of a new film, a documentary called Dark Clouds Over Elberton, the true story of the Georgia Guidestones. We welcome Chris Pinto to the program. Chris, welcome. Hey, Derek. Good to be here. You and uh, our friend Dr. Future, Dr. Michael Bennett, uh, right. collaborated on this documentary about the Georgia Guidestones. Um, maybe not as well known to our audience as uh, some other, say, more uh, 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 nefarious or notorious conspiracies, as it were. Well, what is it about the Georgia Guidestones that drew you and Dr. Bennett to make this film? Well, the mystery of the Guidestones, I've known about it since... Um Oh, since probably about 2003, 2004, uh, when I first heard about it from Dr. Stan Monteith mm. and did a little bit of coverage. I went there and visited the Stones and did some filming and included a short sequence in one of my films, Megiddo II, The New Age, as part of kind of showing the New Age movement and different aspects of it, uh, which involve environmentalism and then population control. Mm -hmm. My interest in it uh, has also been in terms of prophecy in the book of Revelation, when we're reading about the calamities that come upon the earth, at one point uh, it talks about how uh, the, the blood is shed from the winepress of the wrath of God mm -hmm. up to the horse's bridle and right. so on. And so there are many prophecy teachers who believe there's gonna be a great you know, outpouring of, of blood, a, a future holocaust, a time of tribulation, and so on. And so with the, the guidestones, the guidestones are calling for maintaining a world population below 500 million people. Hmm. And with about 7 billion people on the planet, that would mean many people would have to die. Right. Could it somehow or other be pointing toward the fulfillment of certain prophecies in the Bible? So that's, that was my interest in it as a Christian. Mm -hmm. uh, and we talk about that in the film. Uh, but then when, when we moved our little ministry from Los Angeles to Nashville, Tennessee, that's when I met Dr. Mike Bennett. Mm -hmm. And we were just... Uh, half a day's drive from the Georgia Guidestones. And so I wanted to pursue uh, a more full length project, a full on documentary, and really just talk about the history of the monument mm -hmm. and go and interview the people there who were involved in the building of it. So I called, uh, called Mike up, he and I had wanted to work on something together and uh, asked him if he'd come and co-produce it with me. And he said, sure. And so we, we went to Elberton and uh, began this Great detective story. Mm. And the, uh, the takeaway is that uh, in the course of examining and exploring the history of the Georgia Guidestones, you discovered the identity, the f first uh, it, it, people, in, in, as far as I know, who've actually figured out and, and identified the mysterious R.C. Christian, who was the man responsible for going into Elberton, Georgia, and commissioning this monument. Right. Uh, back in 1979, this mysterious stranger shows up. He goes uh, to this granite company because Elberton, Georgia is known as the, uh, the granite capital of the world. Mm -hmm. And he talks to a man named Joe Fendley. He introduces himself as R.C. Christian, but admits that that is not his real name. It's a pseudonym. Mm -hmm. And so uh, uh, Mr. Fendley is very skeptical about him and whether or not, you know, this guy is a, a kook, as he said. Uh, he didn't know. Uh, but the man said he wanted to build this large granite monument that was going to provide guidance for mankind. And when he heard the dimensions of the monument, because it's almost 20 feet tall, mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a very large monument with these huge granite stones, uh, he realized it was going to be very expensive. So he wasn't sure he could trust him, but he sent him over to the local bank to talk to a man named Wyatt Martin. And he said, OK, if you can set this thing up with Mr. Martin, then we'll move forward on the project. Uh, so uh, R.C. Christian goes, he meets with Wyatt Martin, who was the banker there. And uh, Wyatt Martin agreed to handle the finances for the project. But he said, I can't open a bank account for you under a false name. Right. I'm going to have to know who you are. And so he said, OK, I'll reveal my identity, provided you don't let anybody else know. And so Wyatt Martin is the only man mm -hmm. historically who knew the true identity of R.C. Christian. And of course, we were able to go and interview Wyatt Martin and we had a lengthy interview with him, I think about three hours long, uh, during which he revealed certain information to us. Mm -hmm. And we showed it to you in the film. He, uh, we, had, we had discovered from a, uh, a magazine article that had been published earlier that Wyatt Martin kept the paperwork 
uh, from his correspondence with R.C. Christian mm -hmm. in an old IBM computer case. And this was from back in the day when the computers right. weighed, you know, the, the size of a like a you yeah. Know, yeah yeah like a like a big steam computer powered case. computers yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. And so we had read about this, but when people have tried to get access to that case, Mr. Martin has always said, no, no, I won't show it to you. So he wouldn't show it to anybody. Well, we go there and, and we talked to Wyatt Martin, uh, Mike and I, and got along very well with him. And turns out he was a Christian man. Okay. And so he shared his Christian faith with us. And of course we were, you know, we, we actually spent fellowship time with him as believers. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was not shy about sharing his faith at all. In fact, that comes out in the film. But at one point, we did ask him if he still had the IBM computer case. He said that he did. And he eventually agreed to show it to us. Mm -hmm. So he takes us out. You know, we show you in the film. We go out the back door and go out to his shed in the backyard. And, uh, and he let us see his IBM computer case. Then Dr. Future, Mike uh, Bennett, uh, talks him into opening it up and showing us some of the paperwork there. And while he's showing us the paperwork and reading from the letters of R.C. Christian, this kind of thing, we were able to gather clues mm -hmm. that we put together in the film. And while he didn't tell us who R.C. Christian was, we conducted our own investigation. And uh, and that's how we discovered who R.C. Christian mm. is. Uh, just briefly, because we'll touch more on, on this more tomorrow, the, the message of the Guidestones. But without disclosing the, the identity of R.C. Christian, uh, what did you learn about his background and its relationship to the message on the Georgia Guidestones? Well, his background, he was, uh, he was, he was, he clearly had an interest in eugenics. And uh, one of the things that comes out because we went and interviewed people who knew him in his uh, hometown. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that they revealed to us was that he was a, uh, a, a friend of Dr. William Shockley. Mm. Okay, Dr. Shockley, who was very much into eugenics and the idea of population control and this kind of thing. Then you have the book that was published by um, R.C. Christian under the name Robert Christian about five years after the monument was completed. And in that book, he's in no uncertain way revealing that he believes there needs to be global government mm -hmm. and that the governments of the earth need to be involved in limiting the world population. Mm. So there's a lot of little details like that that come out in the film and to make it very clear that he, he had a very strong interest in population control. He never talks about things like concentration camps or anything like that, no. just to be fair. Uh, but he does talk about uh, measures like they employ in China with you know, a one child family and that kind of thing. And then having by law certain penalties for people who have more than one child and so on. So that's the, the very disturbing part, I think, of his philosophy that comes out in the film. Hmm. Dark Clouds Over Elberton, the true story of the Georgia Guidestones is a new documentary film from Adullam Films, Chris Pinto, Dr. Michael Bennett, the uh, producers of the film. You'll find this available in the Skywatch TV store right now. Uh, $24.95 is the cost, but uh, as a bonus, we will toss in a $20 value, the book Forbidden Secrets of the Labyrinth by Mark Flynn. Both of those available at skywatchtvstore.com. Uh, tomorrow, Chris, want to talk a little bit more about why the Georgia Guidestones should concern us as Christians. And uh, so if you can hang around a bit, we'll uh, talk a little bit longer. Absolutely. Very good. And we will see you again tomorrow. And we thank you for watching as we keep watch. I'm Derek Gilbert, and this is Skywatch TV. Thank <laughs> you.